Welcome back to Hughes Performance Tech Talk. I'm your host, Pete Nichols. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're going to continue our ongoing series on the General Motors Power Glide transmission today. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking about transmission cases themselves. If this is your first time tuning in, this is the fourth episode. Uh, we have three previous episodes already uploaded on our channel, so we'll be sure that you go back and watch those. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Click on that bell so you're getting notifications when we upload new content uh, for 2020. We're going to make it our goal to have a new video up every week. And uh, check us out on Facebook and Instagram and our website, HughesPerformance.com. So moving into the discussion on cases today, uh, if you go back in this series, you'll note that General Motors began producing the aluminum case power glide in 1962. Uh, it's long since been a staple of the drag racing community and uh, has trickled down into high horsepower street cars. Uh, it's used in a wide variety of other applications, circle track racing, monster trucks, um, tractor pulling applications, uh, it's it just it it's a great fit for a huge variety of motorsport applications. When it comes to the cases, um, one thing to keep in mind when you're dealing with a stock case like what we have pictured here, what we have pictured here, which is machined, we'll get into that. Uh, you're dealing with aluminum castings that are 50, 60 years old at this point. They have an unknown amount of duty cycles on them. You really don't know the history on them unless you're buying an original transmission out of an original car with a known history. And metallurgy's changed a lot, casting quality's changed a lot. Um, there's just been a lot of improvements in the aftermarket with the cases. So if you're going to run a stock case power glide in a performance application, you just want to be mindful of those limitations based on uh, unknown history of the case and again unknown du duty cycles, heat cycling, that type of thing. And also these cases are lacking in certain areas in terms of casting strength. That being said, I don't want to give stock cases a bad rap. Uh, we very rarely have a case failure uh, these days. Uh, chassis construction's gotten a lot better, things are a lot stiffer and more rigid and that helps preserve the integrity of a stock case. Anything that you can do to eliminate twist in the chassis or twist between the engine and the rest of the powertrain. Uh, that's going to help preserve the life of the stock case. But there's still some practical limita limitations. Generally speaking, anything that's getting up around a thousand flywheel horsepower and consistently using that power level or higher, uh, we really prefer to see you in an aftermarket case, both for strength and safety reasons. That being said, there are guys out there that have thrown and continue to throw more power than that in a stock case and don't experience failures. So I don't want to give you the impression that you can't throw more power at it, but the more power you throw at it, the greater the liability the stock case becomes. As far as 62 and later power glides go, stock cases are all pretty much on a level playing field. There's not any one case that's any particularly better than the other. Um, there are some cases that you'll see large holes machined into the bell housing right from GM. Uh, those were power glides that were air-cooled. They, they lacked the fluid cooling circuit in them. You see the ports here in the aftermarket case for that cooling circuit. In the stock case here, you see they're in the same location. Uh, Corvairs would use an air-cooled power glide. They actually had a fan built into the converter that helped pull air in and cool the converter. That's where most of your heat's generated anyway. Um, those cases can be machined for uh, the normal cooler circuit for oil. But honestly, there's still so many stock cases out there that it's really not worth the time or the hassle to try and use an air-cooled case. Uh, apart from that, you can use pretty much anything else, whether it was an original uh, 176 planetary carrier or 182 carrier, the cases remain the same and parts freely interchange between all cases. So that makes life really easy. It's a very modular design. Um, some weak links in the case when you're dealing with stock castings are mostly found right here in this area where the band adjuster screw is threaded into the case. When you're dealing with an aftermarket power glide with a trans brake valve body for a racing application or high horsepower street application, you're normally dealing with a significant increase in line pressure 
Uh, in our own transmissions, we set our power glides up to run between 230 and 260 PSI line pressure. We have a couple different options based on how the transmission is going to be used and how much power you're throwing at it. Um, and that is nearly double, or in some cases is over double, what the original power glide line pressure was set at from GM. With that consequent increase in line pressure, you have a lot more stress going on in this band adjuster screw area because this is what is used to adjust your band and be part of the clamping system that the servo activates against. Servo is normally located in here uh, to apply the band to the direct drum. So because you have that increase in line pressure and the servo has to work harder to apply the band, you have that pressure being applied through the band to the band adjusting screw. So you have more pressure trying to push outward on the case against the band adjuster screw. And eventually you can actually develop cracks here or even break the case right here. And that's in our experience, the most common power glide case failure. Again, we don't see it a lot these days, but if it's gonna break, that's usually where it will break. Uh, if you're breaking a power glide around the bell housing casting, then you have a engine or transmission mounting issue, a chassis twist issue, or just a case that was already compromised to begin with and just had a flaw in it that didn't appear to the naked eye. So if you break a case, you're gonna lose fluid out of the transmission. That fluid can get under your rear tires. That can obviously cause the car to spin out of control. You could wreck the car. Uh, it's just a bad day for everyone. So if you're drag racing or high horsepower street car, you wanna use a power glide, you're making a lot of power, just uh, really give it some strong consideration on what case you wanna use in your transmission build because uh, it's not just a strength issue, it's a safety issue. Uh, apart from that, the integrity of the stock case is actually pretty good. Um, not prone to a lot of failures in any other areas of the castings of the cases. Uh, but this area is definitely one to keep in mind. And if you are using one, just, you know, give it a good once over once in a while and visually inspect it to see if there's any signs of distress. Uh, moving into aftermarket cases, uh, Reed Racing, formerly known as Dead and Bear, uh, addressed the need for a power glide aftermarket case years and years ago. Uh, it's a staple of the racing industry and for power glide builders worldwide. This is a good example of the first style, although this is the latest and greatest PG1500 model uh, of the Reed Racing case, again, formerly known as Dead and Bear. It's a completely aftermarket casting, has extra casting ribs, increased casting thickness. It's beefed up at the band adjuster screw area. This case is so strong and always has been so strong that it is SFI certified, meaning that you don't have to run any external shielding around the case or the bell housing area like you would with a stock case transmission once you're running quick enough times at the track. Uh, so this cuts down on bulk in the chassis, uh, cuts down weight even though it's a thicker case and a little bit heavier. It's still lighter than a stock case with all the shields. And it's infinitely stronger than a stock case. Um, I can't really tell you that there is a power limit on these Reed Racing Power Glide cases and a lot of the other aftermarket cases that are out there. Uh, the design is fantastic. The hydraulic circuitry in them is really good. Just Everything that could be addressed or fixed in an OEM case has been done in the aftermarket. These are definitely worth your time, worth your money to invest in. Uh, it just saves a lot of headache, a lot of hassle, and fixes all those potential safety hazards uh, when you are using a stock case. So Reed Racing and a few others have this one piece case, which looks a lot like the stock case here. It's obviously got the regular Chevrolet bell housing pattern in addition to the seventh bolt hole up here that can be used on some LSX engine applications. And then the case eventually evolved to use a bolt-on bell housing, so it's much more modular in design. Uh, this case still uses all the same normal power glide guts, all the parts interchange. There's nothing unique about that or any special fitting required. Uh, Reed Racing and other companies that offer similar cases 
offer bell housings that bolt onto here uh, to fit these behind a wide variety of engines. So if you have a small block Ford or a Ford modular engine, uh, Buick Oldsmobile Pontiac, uh, if you're a Mopar fan, um, if you're an uh, import fan, you have a Nissan RB series engine or Toyota 2JZ or maybe you have an Australian Ford Barra engine, uh, there are plenty of belt housing options available to use with this case so you can easily and quickly install a power glide behind those engines without the use of any bulky adapters or uh, that can be troublesome to sometimes get fitted into a chassis. Now, you may notice on this stock case that the bell housing is missing and we have this aluminum adapter ring. We also offer this as an option for the more budget-oriented enthusiast who wants to use a stock case to save a few bucks for his project and wants to put the power glide behind a non-Chevrolet-based engine. This billet adapter ring features a CNC machined pocket here that locates around the ring that's machined into the case during the bell housing removal process. That serves to positively locate the ring. The ring's physically retained by the front pump bolts. And then this bolt pattern here is actually the same exact bolt pattern that's found on the reed racing case here. So any bell housing that fits a reed racing case uh, or similar fits this adapter ring. So again, if you're on a budget, you just prefer a stock case for whatever reason may be. You have a lower horsepower combination where you want to use a glide, you want to put it behind a non-GM engine. We have the solution for that. In addition to this option, we can also set up the stock case without this ring and use a JW Performance bolt down bell housing, which it doesn't require the adapter ring. It just bolts on to the front pump bolts. We'll go in and do some machining to the face of the pump to help index the bell housing to give it more positive location. Uh, and JW has quite a few bell housing operation or uh, offerings for different engines as well. So basically, we can put a power glide behind anything these days. It's a great choice for a wide variety of applications. Uh, we have them available in the standard 27 spline, 1.187 inch output shaft dimension, common to GM. We also have them for the bigger 32 spline. Uh, 1.375 inch turbo 400 spec for maximum effort horsepower applications or for the guy that just prefers the bigger 400 output shaft and his power glide. Uh, we can do that in the aftermarket case. So that pretty much covers the basics on power glide cases. Uh, if you have questions, comments, definitely put them in the comment section below. Uh, we want to see what you have to say. We'll be on there interacting with you. Uh, if you have any suggestions on material and content that you want to see generated, definitely throw that out there as too. Uh, we want to generate what you want to see. We really appreciate your viewership and your subscription. Uh, please like and share our videos. And tune in to episode 5 where we're going to cover extension housings, which is the part that bolts onto the back of the case here. Thank you.